When a country is designed without purpose, beyond stealing and putrefaction, you see the insanity that you see in the Nigerian space. Who are the designers of Nigerian bandits? The likes of Obasanjo designed Nigeria, Babangida designed Nigeria, Abdul Salami designed Nigeria, Ola Ahmed Tinobu is designing Nigeria, Akpapio is designing Nigeria, and we are telling you, please, this is not about your class. I do not need them. What you need to do is wake up in your space and speak your truth. This country is dying. It's dying. The easy recourse is to begin to speak in secessionist voices. But the reality is that those secessionist voices are merely distractions. It takes you away from what you should be talking about, and that is how to rescue this country from the one or two percent that have enslaved all of us. We are not in a democracy. If you call it one, then it is a feudalized democracy where you elect your emirs and you elect your sultan. The class is the same. They are all princely. They cross party lines at will. This is not about reforming a system. What you have before you is a liberation struggle. You may elect to couch it in those terms, or you might continue to have the discourse of your enslavers, which is the one that tells you that, yes, if we allow this system to be amended, you can have more participation, and then something good will come out of a system that is designed to ensure that you are enslaved. You might like your chains, and there are several reasons to like them sometimes. Some of you live in nice prisons in Ikoi, some of you in Lekki, some of you in the GRAs down the road. I was told of somebody who is here today who comes to, to, who comes to his office at the CBD every day from Lekki. And I was telling the person who told me, the person is there, I will not mention them, you know yourself. You are living the better part of your day in traffic. How did we come to the point where we have embraced the normalization of insanity? And we continue to find reasons to make it sound like it makes sense. Poverty has been weaponized against our people. And it began with the weaponization of ignorance. As I have said before, and I'll say this in close. Thank you for your time. But you. remember this. Light shines brightest in darkness. Yeah. If Nigeria is in darkness, it's because you are all refusing to shine your light. There are reasons to refuse. Oh, if, they, if I shine my light, they might put it out. They're going to die anyway. You know what keeps me asleep? And I sleep very well. I sleep very well because I know that in a nation of liars, I have yet to tell the truth. I will achieve immortality if only for the simple reason that I refuse to be the same as everyone else in my space. I'm going to try and see if we can gain immortality as well. The only thing that is starting for each and every one of us is the fact of our mortality. We will all die. But what we say, the things we do, how we live with our fellow men and women will be remembered long after we are gone. I wish Mr. Pata were to be sat here, but I see he has a lot of people with him, and I hope to one or two of them will be sure to pass on part of what I have to say that is actually intended for him. I remember a part of Esther, I believe it should be somewhere around the fourth chapter of Esther, where Mordecai had occasion to speak with Esther, and he said very clearly, perhaps you were born for such a time as this. Perhaps Mr. Apata was born for such a time as this. <laughs> Mr. Ogunano was very clear and trenchant in making clear that as far as the Ramimba is concerned, we do not consider him the proper person to lead the MBA at this time. But that is the idiocy of the human being. 
we always assume that we see beyond the limit of our sight. So we walk on the basis of our prejudices, our biases. And on those bases, we eliminate and we choose. It is very easy for anyone to see me with my crazy dregs. All right, so I, I appear a little distinguished today. I'm wearing a blazer, something I haven't worn in a while. But we tend to get fooled by the cover of the books that we find when we browse through the library. I hope Mr. Akwata will surprise me. You see, the beauty of living in a dark land is that it's very easy for light to shine in darkness. Mr. Akwata has become the president of, yeah, president of the Nigerian Bar Association at an epochal moment in the history of this country. Nigeria is dying. I'm fond of pointing out the fact that we have normalized insanity. And it is very easy to laugh when I say those words. But it is the truth. And all you really need to do to confirm the veracity of my statement is to step outside the precinct of this place where all of you are pretending to be safe. <laughs> yeah, we keep up appearances. We all pretend to be safe. But our reality will suggest that we are merely lying to ourselves. We cover our insanity with nice clothes. We cover it with our vacuous religiosity. And then we tell ourselves that somebody else is going to deliver us well the right way. I sat down there and I listened to the president elect. And he spoke extensively, at least to an extent about the need to address the welfare of the Nigerian lawyer. Only a fool will argue against that. He's completely correct. But as the learned seal had pointed out, and sir, may I say so, you've dignified the office of a state in Nigeria. There are too so many for him to say Thank you. Now, you spoke about dealing with issues concerning our members. Here is the truth, my brother. And please do tell him. It is almost impossible for a lawyer in Nigeria to live at peace or have anything approaching normalcy in his life because the Nigerian state, I almost call it a nation because I hope and wish and pray that we become one one day. But the Nigerian state is at war with itself. So if Mr. Apata is going to rise to the occasion in this season, yeah, not all of us are going to be mad. Some of us are going to have to speak like rational things. So it is always nice to have the like of Mr. Apata to speak to those who might not find themselves overly angry about him talking to them. Because some of us have two loud voices, you know, we speak a little too harshly. Perhaps he might be the one that goes to speak the Dogon Trenchy whilst we are busy being crazy wherever we need to be crazy. But the fact of the matter is, this is not about the Nigerian lawyer. Nigeria is dying. That is the objective reality we all need to wrap our minds around. Now, the second issue that I have sought to deal with is about how charity must begin at home. There is no charity anywhere, so you can't take any into the home. Nigeria has become like a sewer. You walk through that sewer on a daily basis and the fecal matter sticks to you. It sticks in your brain, it sticks in your nostril. No matter how much you scrub yourself, the fact of the matter is that we have all become acculturated to madness and we have become almost in nail, almost as if we can't see it. But you know something I found? Every system is designed to produce something. Every system. A system was designed to produce this, produce that, and each and every one of the items you see in this room. You cannot take the system that was designed to produce this and turn it into one that is capable of producing this. It's not possible. Everything is designed for a purpose. When a country is designed without purpose, beyond stealing and putrefaction, 
you see the insanity that you see in the Nigerian space. Who are the designers of Nigeria? Bandits. The likes of Obasanjo design Nigeria. Babangida design Nigeria. Abdul Salami design Nigeria. Ola Ahmed Tinobu is designing Nigeria. Akpapio is designing Nigeria. And we are telling you, please, this is not about your class. I do not need them. What you need to do is wake up in your space and speak your truth. This country is dying. It's dying. The easy recourse is to begin to speak in secessionist voices. But the reality is that those secessionist voices are merely distractions. It takes you away from what you should be talking about, and that is how to rescue this country from the one or two percent that have enslaved all of us. We are not in a democracy. If you call it one, then it is a feudalized democracy, where you elect your emirs and you elect your sultan. The class is the same. They are all princelings. They cross party lines at will. This is not about reforming a system. What you had before you is a liberation struggle. You may elect to couch it in those terms, or you might continue to have the discourse of your enslavers, which is the one that tells you that, yes, if we allow this system to be amended, you can have more participation, and then something good will come out of a system that is designed to ensure that you are enslaved. You might like your chains, and there are several reasons to like them sometimes. Some of you live in nice prisons, in Ikoi, some of you <laughs> in Lekki, some of you in the GRAs down the road. I was told of somebody who is here today, who comes to, to, who comes to his office at the CBD every day from Lekki. <laughs> And I was telling the person who told me, the person is there. I will not mention them. You know yourself. <laughs> you are living the better part of your day in traffic. How did we come to the point where we have embraced the normalization of insanity? And we continue to find reasons to make it sound like it makes sense. Poverty has been weaponized against our people. And it began with the weaponization of ignorance. As I have said before, and I'll say this in close, thank you for your time. But you. remember this, light shines brightest in darkness. If Nigeria is in darkness, it's because you are all refusing to shine your light. There are reasons to refuse. Oh, if, they, if I shine my light, they might put it out. They go and die anyway. You know what keeps me asleep? And I sleep very well. I sleep very well because I know that in a nation of liars, I have yet to tell the truth. I will achieve immortality if only for the simple reason that I refuse to be the same as everyone else in my space. I'm going to try and see if we can gain immortality as well. The only thing that is starting for each and every one of us is the fact of our mortality. We will all die. But what we say, the things we do, how we live with our fellow men and women, will be remembered long after we are gone. I thank you very much for your time, for your attention. But I would be most thankful to you if you left this place today, knowing one thing in your heart, where we are is not normal. We need to turn around. You won't die twice. I you know something else? Somebody is foolish enough to kill all that little Nola Farrow to me. It only make me immortal. I look forward to it. Yeah.